there she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's over in the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. Stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. Go on then, Gail. We'll be here waiting for you when you're finished. Time was I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Am I? You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex-lover. My omnipotent, omniscient ex-lover. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm going to have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. You'd make a fine three-dragon anti-player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three-dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. of Waterdeep. You look well. As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Casks. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember, you were my lover, my chosen, yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic wrought in the brief moment Cassus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Cassus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather thing could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave, a temporary method. 
measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Karsus to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. soil once more. I can't believe I saw it. After all this time. Relieved. Drained. Proud of myself for summoning the courage to go to her in the first place. And, if I'm being totally honest, a bit lightheaded. As if it wasn't enough to have seen her again. She didn't exactly summon me there for small talk. A Karsite weave. Within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Karsus's malignant creation. Gods! How did I not see that? Hmm. True enough. There's a reason such unwitting heroes have been the backbone of lyric and legend for as long as both have existed. Even so, I was hardly some naive apprentice at the time. I considered myself an archmage, and yet was fool enough to be mistaken for a common conjurer. At least now I'm armed with the truth, and Mistra's expectations. Sounds like the door to redemption is open at last. All I have to do is walk through it, carrying the crown of Carsus. Thank you. There aren't many I'd trust to stand beside me on such a journey. Fewer still who would do so because they believed I deserved such a chance. If I could promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil. I will not let you down. Now, I believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to. Shall we? So, Gale's hedging his bets with Mistra? I can't say I blame him. Who'd want to hold a power like the Crown of Carsus in their hands just to hand it to someone else? I know what my decision would be, but we're all different, of course. Wow. So that was Mistra. Pretty spectacular stuff. But I think Gail was right not to agree to do her bidding, no questions asked. I respect the gods. But they don't always understand what they're asking of us. Maybe immortality makes it hard to know what it's like to be one of us piggies. Proud of Gale, though. It takes some man to hold his own in front of the divine. My mind is clear. Its burden lifted. When the Netherbrain died, the tadpoles died with it. No offense meant, of course. I can never forget what you did for us, for the city. It makes little difference to me. I did what I had to to secure my freedom.
like if Yankee are departing in peace. Curious sight and a day already full of them. With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city. Smoldering, waiting to be rebuilt. But it seems that Gale's mind is elsewhere. The crown. It's somewhere in the Chiontha. If I salvage the stones, I can reforge it. Power of Carsus would be in my hands. But what then? What would I do with it once I have it? Wise suggestion. I felt a hubris once before and landed myself with this orb. They could rather not make the same mistake again. If this adventure has taught me anything, it's that there are things in this world far more valuable than power. Besides, I've grown quite fond of this merry band of ours, and I'd quite like to see what happens to it. I'm sure Mistra will summon me soon enough, but until then, I propose we celebrate our victory the mortal way with a drink in our hands and reckless abandon in our hearts. I honestly don't mind what we do once we get to the... Ow! What the... Oh, no. Oh, God. Well, it was... It was nice when it lasted. Ah! I, I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I suppose that's the last time any of us will see him. And the last time I'll ever see the sun. Oh, right. You. Hello. Yes, I'm certain it is. As for you, well, I've heard congratulations are in order. You helped Mr. Dakarios save Baldur's Gate from the absolute, isn't that right? Well done, despite my old friend's genius. He'd have blown himself up long ago if not for the help of friends like you and I. You ought to come visit myself and Gail when you're able, if you can extract yourself from what I'm sure are very important responsibilities. We'll send word by pigeon when we've need of you. I used to have a taste for them, but a great many things have changed in recent months. Ta-ta, darling. Oh, there you are. Well, well, look what the Tressim dragged in. Professor Gail Decarius of Blackstaff Academy, educator of the esteemed School of Illusion. Pleasure to remake your acquaintance. Well, that was quite lovely. I'm glad you're as pleased to see me as I am you. I have to say, I'm quite grateful to just be Gale for the evening. I fear my students find me somewhat intimidating due to my, uh, explosive former reputation. I seem to put the fear of the gods into them. Or the fear of Mistra, to be more specific. I surrendered the crown of Carsus to her, as I told you I would. And in return, she cured me of the orb at last. Even now, I struggle to put the feelings into words. It was like exhaling for the first time after holding my breath for so very long. Of course, I haven't clarified with my students that the orb is no longer a threat. 
The legend of my explosive capabilities is an excellent means of controlling a classroom. Too good, if anything. I spend most of my time trying to convince them how much fun the study of magic can be. But it'd be easier to crack a smile on an intellect devourer than some of my pupils. Illusory magic has the power to confound the senses, to render the impossible into reality, and to allow expression of that most magical attribute of all, imagination. Had you the decades to spare, I think you'd prove quite adept at it, as you did in that first lesson I taught you. It was quite something to share such a moment with you, though it vanished all too quickly. Teaching you was hardly an effort at all. Not like my present cohort of apprentices. Oh, they try their best, of course. And they can manage to stay awake. The cheek of them! Nothing a well-placed swipe from Tara can't fix, though. And what of you? What are you making of this newfound lease of life we earned? Quiet is not always peace. That much I can vouch for. But in your case, I think you deserve a moment's rest. I've told my students plenty of tales about our escapades. You're something of a hero to them, you know? I'll be delighted to introduce you to my current cohort as a guest lecturer, perhaps. I'm sure they'd have plenty of questions for you. See, why not? Two heads are better than one. <laughs> Unless you're dealing with an Etin. Of course, you'll be most welcome to stay with me in my tower. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, my apologies, Tara. That would be our tower. It will give us plenty of time to catch up on your adventures. I'm very curious to know what you've been up to these past months, but I suspect the telling of that tale would keep you tied to me all evening. So, in the spirit of selflessness, I encourage you to mix and mingle for now, with time enough to come. <laughs> 